Hello everybody, I hope you all are doing well, and welcome to the second episode of Scottswood Paleo Zoo. This is my attempt at making the most realistic zoo possible in Prehistoric Kingdom, featuring a variety of the game's current selection of smaller extinct animals. So this will actually be part one of the Platyosaurus habitat, because in this episode I focus on the main habitat itself, like the outdoor yard and everything, in the next episode, I'll be working on the backstage as well as the shelter for the Platyosaurus. Now, unfortunately, I did have quite a lot of footage with how I had made the moat initially. However, I ended up cutting it out from the footage, from the final cut of this gameplay footage, specifically because A, it was kind of all over the place. I wasn't really um, happy with some of my original iterations, so I kept jumping back and forth between ideas, and I spent a long time on just very intricate details that shouldn't have taken me that long. And B, because of that aforementioned reason, the speed build would have been much, much, much longer than it is right now. So that's the primary reason why I didn't include the moat building process. However, I do want to make a small set of tutorials in the future about how to you know, make your exhibits look more interesting or whatnot and more quote-unquote realistic. So definitely moat building will be um, up on the top of my list because I feel like it's something that a lot of people struggle with in this game. And yeah, I'd like to do my part. Again, a big shout out to Demacito, or sorry, Domacitos. Their prefabs on Prehistoric Kingdoms workshop have been an absolute game changer. I highly, highly, highly recommend if you don't get any other prefabs, get the mud walls because it makes a huge difference. Now back to the speed build. So again, I'm making this habitat for Platyosaurus, specifically the smaller species of Platyosaurus that was added to the game recently, that being Platyosaurus gracilis. And the reason why I chose this species was because the zoo that I'm building is within a limited amount of space. I know that the Prehistoric Kingdom maps are absolutely massive, which is all fun and dandy, but to really challenge myself, I restricted myself to a certain amount of space to build my zoo within. I'm still going to try to build stuff around the zoo to make it feel more lived in, so there's going to be like a little road, a parking lot, um, a subway station, as well as um, like surrounding buildings, and I do recall someone mentioned in the comments maybe looking to... Um, certain zoning and codes that would be allowed especially with the zoo with this um especially given that this is a zoo with potentially dangerous animals see how like how far apartment complexes will be so that was really interesting i'll definitely take a look into that and yeah i'm really enjoying building this so far and it took me quite some time to figure out what animal i really wanted to be at the entrance of the zoo or rather what the starting animal would be but once this update rolled out, and once I got my hands on Platyosaurus, I knew that this was the perfect animal, especially given that I wouldn't be able to really house any sauropods in a zoo this big, since the smallest sauropod, quote-unquote, that we have in game right now is Camarasaurus. Um, but that was before, of course, uh, Platyosaurus. Now, Platyosaurus is a um, sauropodomorph, and these animals existed much, much earlier in the... Uh, eventual sauropod evolution so it's quite interesting to see that even though these were obligate bipedal bipedal animals um they're already showing signs of eventually evolving into the larger sauropods i.e they have the long necks their teeth shape and everything and yeah it's really awesome to have this animal i feel like it's such a requested animal since like prehistoric kingdom's inception and it's just such a quintessential Triassic dinosaur because at the end of the day, like there weren't that many dinosaurs during the late Triassic and Platyosaurus is definitely the number one dinosaur people think of next to Coelophysis, um, especially thanks to its appearance. It's absolutely iconic appearance in walking with dinosaurs. And when I originally made this habitat, I actually thought about making the moat a um, kind of like a waterfall feature. So, you know, just to emulate that scene from Walking with Dinosaurs, where you have these Platyosaurus herd walking across um, well, these waterfalls. But in the end of the day, that doesn't seem like the most realistic approach, um, especially to what I'm going for in the zoo. And at the end of the day, I'm really happy with how my moat turned out. I love that it basically puts you at the same level of these dinosaurs, and it really gives you a fantastic view into their habitat. And I don't think I would have wanted it any other way. Now, Platysaurus gracilis differs from the larger Platysaurus trossingensis, I believe is how you say it. Um, so yeah, so it differs from that species in terms of size. It's also slightly older, 
and at one point it was actually going to be called Celosaurus before it was reassigned as Platyosaurus. Now based on their teeth, Platyosaurus and other prosauropods appear to share a lot of similarities with modern day herbivorous and omnivorous iguanas, such as the green iguana or the rock iguana, and that leads scientists to believe that these animals may have been actually omnivorous. However, they would have been primarily herbivorous, so they would have primarily eaten plants but then supplemented their diet with either insects or carrion. In Prehistoric Kingdom, um, both species of Plediosaurus are omnivorous. They both require insects and vegetables. So that's why you see here in this exhibit, I include a termite mound enrichment. And in terms of feeders, I'm not going to include those until I start working on the backstage. My plan is to include the feeders either within the facility or near the keeper area where you can see like towards the back of the exhibit there's some exposed fence that's would be areas where keepers could do like protective contact work and another cool thing i really want to try with the platyosaurus's house will be to make it a dual species facility so next to the platyosaurus i'm working on a solidosaurus exhibit and i thought it would be cool to have a building where one section is for the platyosaurus the other section is for the solidosaurus and that way the keepers will spend less time going between habitats so that's going to be a really fun and interesting challenge to pull off and another thing unlike most other zoos i am going to be doing full interiors for every um, backstage and every shelter that i build in this zoo specifically because it's already pretty small enough as is and that way i can also upload these to the steam workshop once the entire zoo is done so with this shelter i'm trying to think if i'm either going to make it one a one and all building or if i'm going to try to maybe make it to where you could sub they're connected but you could separate them into separate blueprints that way that way like if somebody doesn't want to do a dual habitat or rather a dual purpose shelter like they don't want to have the shelter be for both platysaurus and shalitosaurus they'll have that option available to them so i'll have to plan that out but i am really looking forward to it and again i'm having a lot of fun building the zoo um i remember back in like prehistoric pre-alpha the first zoo i finished the oahu paleo zoo that one i really was going for like using up as much of the space as possible while still trying to make it feel realistic within the confines of the game but now, ever since Prehistoric Kingdom has released in early access, so much has been added to the game. And I feel like, especially with the inclusion of staff, now is the best time to actually try that again. And actually um, really, really, really push for realism. And the reason I personally want to push for realism is because, you know, at the end of the day, dinosaurs are extinct. We're never going to see them um, as hard as that is, as hard of a pill as that is to swallow but this is kind of the next best thing. And especially with Prehistoric Kingdom's more realistic approach to these animals, I really feel like pushing for realism and hopefully aspiring other um, either YouTubers or players to do the same in this game will help bring some new light and new perspective. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video and if you're enjoying the series so far, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, yeah, share this with whoever you think might find it interesting. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.